Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I am Jared Hall, Senior TV Editor at Entertainment Weekly. As part of EW's awardist coverage of the 2021 Emmys, we have gathered several of this year's supporting superstars across dramas and limited series. So please welcome Noma Dumezwini, who plays Hugh Grant's savvy lawyer on the HBO limited series, The Undoing. And by the way, she's kind of popping up everywhere right now, also on Made for Love and Pose. We can't get enough of you. Uh, Tony winner and Emmy nominee John Benjamin Hickey, who plays a white collar criminal adjusting to post-prison life on HBO's reboot of In Treatment. On HBO's Lovecraft Country, Emmy nominee Ingenue Ellis plays Atticus's Aunt Hippolyta Freeman, who once had dreams of being an astronomer and ends up traveling through time and space, making for a truly profound journey. And she was married to George, played by Emmy winner Courtney B. Vance, who also <laughs> starred this year as C.L. Franklin, minister, civil rights activist, and father to Aretha Franklin on National Geographic's Genius Aretha. And on the freshman season of ABC's hit drama, Big Sky, Brooke Smith played Marilee Ligarski, the lonely and heart sick, if not a little oblivious wife to John Carroll Lynch's <laughs> sex trafficking and murderous state trooper who gets what's coming to him thanks to her. Welcome mm -hmm. to all of you. Thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you for having us. Amazing. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Of course. Well, we have a lot of ground to cover here, so let's get to it. I want to start by asking each of you about those roles I just mentioned uh, and the, the aspect of them that, that excited you most to get to explore. I'll start with you, Noma. What I loved about Haley and why what excited me is that she's so different from me. Is that's what a lot of the time will what I look for when I'm playing a, a part. And she's bright with the lawyering stuff. The lawyering stuff is what I call it. Um, that use of um, technique in a courtroom. She knows her stuff. So it was lovely investigating that. And also being in the company of the world that she's in, which I'm not used to, not many people are very used to. So understanding what that means was the joy of investigating. Mm -hmm. She's very sharp. She knew what to do there. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just going to go down my Zoom screen here. Okay, Brooke. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, for me, it was uh, just not knowing what the hell was going to happen next, you know, just being you up in Canada. <laughs> I mean, all of us, right? So it was just really cool to also David Kelly is a pretty good writer. And there's like a lot of space in the writing so that you can put your own creativity in there. It was just, I just really loved getting each new script and seeing what was gonna happen next. Mm -hmm. John? Um, I love playing fucked up people. I mean, and <laughs> the guy that I played, we all do, right? I mean, it's more fun to play a really screwed up person. And this guy was uh, exceptionally screwed up. Um, and what Brooke said to what Brooke was saying, the great thing about a, a TV show is that you think on a scale of one to 10, you're really screwed up in the first episode. And then you get the second script, you're like, holy shit, I thought I was this. I'm now this messed up. So the surprises that came with the great writing for my character and just how deeply his pathology um, went was really fun to, to play. Mm -hmm. Ingenue. Uh, first of all, it's very cool to be in the presence of all these people on this uh, panel. And I watched all of you and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm honored to be in the presence of you all. So I want to see that. Same. Uh, and uh, so, so Miss Hippolyta on Hippolyta, I, you know, it's also cool to play characters that are underestimated because then you can, there's room for you to surprise yourself as well as, as well as the audience. And I think that the way that Hippolyta was presented uh, is being the wife of George Freeman, um, that she was uh, demure and a little bit of a wallflower. And they, the writers of Lovecraft so brilliantly sculpted that, that journey for her that she turns into something completely, completely different and it completely pivots her and pivots the, the, the track of the, uh, the show. So, you know, I, I loved playing characters where you think as John said, you think you know him, but you don't know him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, was that presented to you, all of that information before you got the scripts or was that kind of a journey for you discovering all that too, as you read? 
Well, I, I had heard that this, the episode, episode seven was a sort of storied episode that, that you know, like, oh, wait till episode seven. But, um, but I didn't know what to expect. And I honestly didn't want to read it until the last minute because I didn't want to be disappointed. You know, they're like hyping it up. And then I read it I'm like, yeah. oh, it's all right. But <laughs> it lived up to that. It lived mm-hmm. up to that. Yeah. 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 And back to my original cre- uh, question there, Courtney, for you, uh, what got you excited about playing this character? Not even a character, a real person. <laughs> well, there, there it is, the um, uh, historical person. Um, and, and also, I, I love Anthony Hemingway, who was uh, um, our shepherd uh, during uh, People versus OJ. Um, so whatever he does, I, I kind of follow him if he calls my name. Um, but uh, it, it's very challenging to actually play someone everybody knows. Mm. Um, uh, the, uh, the the Reverend, the good Reverend CL, the good right Reverend CL Franklin was uh, um, is not as well known today, but he was he was probably probably the most well known uh, pastor of his day, uh, um, and one of the first ones to sell his sermons uh, via. Uh, on albums, uh, so he was the million dollar uh, voice. And uh, so, and, and the very complicated man, very complicated relationship between he and his, his superstar da- daughter, you know, when you raise a, when you're a superstar and then you raise somebody who eclipses you, it's, it's a little challenge. <laughs> so, uh, yes. so that was, that was very interesting to navigate. A lot of star power in one household there, for sure. Um, in, in a few cases here uh, with, with some of your characters, um, well, actually, let me back up. Let me ask this first, uh, first. You know, every performer works differently, and that's totally fine. We all, we all have our, uh, our methods, but, you know, no matter what, some kind of rapport has to be there with your scene partners. So what for each of you is the most important thing that goes into building a relationship with your co-star? Mm-hmm. Crickets. I'm gonna... Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> but that means you're thinking that's, it's a, it's not a bad thing. How about trust? Yeah. You know, which uh, I, you know, John camera, John Carol Lynch uh, yeah. and I, I just trusted him immediately because, you know, I mean, it sounds silly, but I just looked in his eyes and he was right there. You know, he didn't, he didn't come in with any kind of, I mean, I'm sure he made some choices, but we just sort of stayed with each other in the moment. And so once I knew I could trust him, you know, I, I yeah, could go trust anywhere. Is good. Trust, yeah. trust is it. For me, I was, it's, it's kind of that sense of, I can hear you and I know you're, you're listening. It's that play I know that the person I can play with but it's exactly what you just said Brooke you can look at the other person in the eye and go okay we're here together that's yeah. why I enjoy yeah being able to laugh too like you're working so hard and especially in in this thing in treatment scene one would begin on page one and be over on page 28 so it was Uzo Aduba and I the great Uzo Aduba and we would do all of our coverage in one day and there's so much pressure on you, you know, and there are times when you feel like you're just sucking and there are times when the other person has your back and that they're making you laugh Mm -hmm. and not talking about the thing that's in the room as much as you are talking about the same, the the thing that's in the room is so key. It's like being able to laugh with each other and not take it all terribly serious, especially when it is so serious pressure is on here because my 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 uh scene partner is on the panel with me right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do we need to do a breakout <laughs> room <laughs> but um and and I, we're and we're playing scene partners today yes, no. yes. <laughs> really um, he can't get rid of me he can't get rid of me um the thing is, is that, you know, I texted Courtney the other night and I said to him after he said something very gracious and wonderful to me is that he is a joy. He's a joy to work with. And when you are in a scene with with Courtney Vance, he makes you better. He insists that you be better, you know, and he lifts he lifts everyone up around him. And I, I think that they're what I mean, I, I just. I just profited from that as a as an actor, as a person, as a woman, and I think also it's just this shared agreement that we're about to do something really, really weird, you know. 
but we're as 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 John said, we're in it. We're in it together. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, it's all been said, um, but uh, I, I would, I guess, I would add uh, that we're all blessed to be able to do what we do. People would kill to be able to be in the to 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 flow. What are you doing next? What's the next thing you're doing? Give us some insight about what your life is like. And you know, our lives are are a lot of times crazy yeah um there there's i remember we um you know on broadway people you know are so oh you're on broadway you know i was on broadway when i was a youngster and the the there were rats in our our, our theater the the uh uh the stage manager would be calling the show and go and shoot a, a, a rat with a bb gun oh, you know so God. it's you know i'm on the fifth floor walk up you know, uh, and you know, it's hot in the summertime and freezing in the wintertime. And, you know, uh, you know, there's, in order to be able to do what we do, you know, behind the scenes, it's, 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 I remember for people versus for six months, I basically lived in my trailer uh, because it was too much traffic to be able to get home, you know, back and forth. And, you know, my family just said, okay, bye daddy, you know, mm. and, uh, so it's, I'm always amazed at, at uh, I think actors are the most courageous people, performers are the most courageous people that you actually uh, are, are walking a tightrope with an audience watching, audience of a crew, audience of an audience, and you're supposed to keep your focus. So uh, I, I'm in awe of all of us doing what we do because it is very challenging. The world thinks it's the most, it's the bestest thing in the whole wide world. And we know the truth. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, and would you change anything? Or would you change and it? And wouldn't would change anything. And navigating yeah. that difference between the, the magic of it all and the truth of it all. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm in awe of uh, all of us who are blessed enough to be able to, to be on a, on, a, on a Zoom conference talking about the the supporting Emmy award that what what is this what are we doing here real that's the fun bit that's the fun bit real. this is amazing this is amazing all the supporting everything he said yeah well um I, I want to kind of touch more on the race here in just a minute but, but before we move on I, I want to ask because we you know we're talking about building those relationships with stars and and being in all of each other's work and stuff in a few cases here um the relationships within your shows are they're built on deception or at least withholding information. I'm thinking Noma, John, Brooke, um, did, did any of that factor into how you crafted these dynamics with these, within these characters? Great questions. That is a really good question. I'm glad I don't, he didn't call my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Feel freaking out right now. There. Guy, What's that? There, there's a different kind of deception going on, I guess, with the, uh, the pastor. But, but you'll come to us later. <laughs> Yeah, right. I think I'm jumping in what you said, Jared, but just that thing of uh, when you get a script beforehand and when you get it as it comes, there's different things to you. So David E. Kelly's script for The Undoing, I got it in advance so you could kind of space and structure the way we wanted to go working with Susanna Beer. Um, so what was the question? <laughs> oh, uh, when, when there's so much kind of deception <laughs> built into the relationships, does that change your, you know, how you craft those dynamics? Yeah. Well, yeah. absolutely, because I was also thinking about, you know, just even asking the question of how much do you know, how much, mm -hmm. how much do you know is happening? How much do you choose not to know? Yeah. How much do you, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. I'm not sure how I crafted them in there, but just even asking those questions, you know, uh, knowing something. what I need, knowing what I need in each scene, knowing what I need to get out of that space. And again, going back to that sense of trusting your actors and, and what you said, uh, and forgive me, and Anna June, uh, and June, that sense of when you're working with people who make you lift up what you're doing. And so mm -hmm. working with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant, and it, that's easy, you just, because they are absolutely totally different ways of working but that presence of storytelling is very palpable in the space. So 
let's let me meet you let me because that's the joy of what this job is how can I meet you to make this part of the storytelling feed your part of the storytelling that's what I enjoy I also felt like the less I knew, the better. Like when I was, sometimes when I was deceiving Uzo's character, I didn't know I was deceiving her until I read the next week's script. And I would sometimes be like, I'm glad I was ignorant because maybe if I'd known, I would have been, I would have like twirled my mustache even more. You know, <laughs> I, would have been, I would have been self-conscious about what I was trying to do to her. And, and I think if I was in a play, I'd want to know everything. But sometimes when you're working in, television and film, the less you know, the more you're kind of alive to the possibility of the moment, maybe. I don't know. It's yeah, weird. I was going to ask that exact right. question, if there is such thing as having too much information about your characters. Because often, you know, there's so much done for backstory, but does that sometimes create more than you actually end up <laughs> needing to know? But that makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to ask, um, because uh, certainly as of late, uh, headlines throughout Hollywood have, uh, have been dominated by um, discussions of diversity. We're talking about, you know, looking at the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and their attempts to, um, you know, change their membership to better, uh, to have a better reflection of the best work in television. Um, but, but these discussions, they're not new. Uh, people have been pushing for changes in all areas of the industry for years. So I'm curious where each of you are actually seeing and feeling that manifest in positive ways. Crickets. <laughs> seeing, seeing and feeling what manifest in positive see, see, ways? Seeing and feeling um, changes to to diversify things like, uh, you know, academy memberships or behind the scenes of shows in terms of, you know, the, the composition of sets, of writer's rooms, all of it. Mm -hmm. well, well, I, I can... I, go ahead. I'm just, you know, it at the point where you realize that, I mean, Hollywood Foreign Press has been the way it's been for ever mm -hmm. and we've all gone oh well that's just the way it is <laughs> so George Floyd has changed the the game mm. and whether or not you agree to it agree about the verdict or agree with what's going on it's we we're at the point now where you got to talk about it and schools are talking about uh, you know secondary schools and colleges are talking about diversity and hiring and curriculum and you know folks are uncomfortable because they've been used to it being first in line mm -hmm. uh, and the the the, the discussion it, there's room enough for everybody Absolutely. there's room enough for everybody at the table so stop hoarding the table open it up and get back to work and that's the that's the the, the tricky part is because folks don't want to give up their privilege, and you got to. I'm sorry, you have to. Yeah. You got to open it up because folks have been on the outside looking in, and we, you know, here here it is. I grew up with not seeing no black people, no people of color on the on the screen, and still going, wow. Yeah. Look at the sound of music. Mm. That's me up there. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what that's, that's the it. reality that's of, of folks of color of a certain generation that we still put ourselves in yeah. the John Wayne's shoes. Our imagination and, is and Clint enough. Eastwood's shoes, yeah. and you know the 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 uh, Godfather shoes, and and all of those shoes. And still, we still were able to enjoy the movie. So mm -hmm. open it up. Let go, boy. Please. And there's also something in the fact that for me coming out, what, what came out of the Golden Globes at the beginning when the nominations were announced was the fact that I May Destroy You, which I think is one of the most brilliant pieces of television in the last few years. Nothing, zilch, nix, nada. And then the conversation via the social media of why, because that's where we're up to post George Floyd. It's why, every question is why, because it's, we're right here, we're right in front of you and work like this is being made. And it's not just about being black, but it's about being the most creative storytelling. I'm always gonna be championing I May Destroy You. I will, if you see me, I'm just gonna keep talking about that show because it's extraordinary. You and many people for sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, we, we touched on, uh, Courtney, you kind of mentioned earlier, you know, here we are part of uh, the, the 
Emmy's discussion. And um, Brooke, I have to say, I have a lot of respect for what you're doing because you are putting yourself in it because there's not uh, a, an actual like studio support system behind your campaign. You're doing it yourself. So what ultimately went into your decision to say, screw this, I'm just doing it. Everyone out you of know, my way, I can handle this. I mean, I think originally maybe Mary Lee wasn't gonna be that big a deal. I'm not really sure. So just contractually speaking, I was a recurring actress. Um, you were Lisa Kudrow. Was I? <laughs> Is that what she was? Wait, was that what she was? You're, you're talking about Friends? No. Gosh, I gotta she pay was, more attention. You're getting wow. it, you, you're making it happen for you. Cause that's, and you to, you, you're changing the game. Change the game, girl, change the game. Oh my God, I'm trying. Well, I mean, even that thing of social media, right? And people being able to express what they think. It just feels exactly. like it, this is a time when we can just say, but um, look, there's a lot of cast members and I'm just, I'm proud of my work in this. So that's why. Beautiful. And Amen. my mom was a, my mom was a publicist, damn it. So I learned how to, you know, what this Very game well is. Very well respected and loved Speak one. for yourself. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and this, you know, it, it, it all it all kind of begs the bigger question about campaigning in general, because I, I personally am someone who loves to hear stories about the crafting of art. And it's why I enjoy these conversations with people like you. But uh, I know there is a much bigger machine involved. And there's also there's also value uh, to the the awards race because recognition sometimes oftentimes means opportunity for more work so is there a personal reckoning that one has to come to in accepting that this now campaigning all of this is just part of the job in many ways i would say well, yes <laughs> i mean it took me whatever 40 years to accept it but I always thought, you know, cream rises to the top or whatever, but uh, yeah, I just feel like you got to get smart about it. Maybe, I don't know. It's always been done. You know, people always have had to say a little something about it. And sometimes it's the studios who are pushing it. Sometimes it's the, you know, the shows themselves that are, are pushing, but somebody has got to push because there's too many shows out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the so, other thing. And you get all, you work long enough, you know, the work is the reward. And you remember, I don't remember who won an Emmy five years ago, but I'll remember the undoing. Like I will, you know, cause it was so great. Like I won't, rem but, but so you learn to separate, like this is a part of a thing that helps the show that helps you. And like you're doing Brooke, it's like, don't apologize. Just get into the fun of it. It's a, it's part of a, a game. Um, yeah. And, and a good this one. is my first experience of all this. So I'm like, wow, because I'm, yes, the story at the moment, I'm going to change the story in about five years time, but because I've been so theatre heavy up until the last two years and all of a sudden, what the hell just happened? And the undoing has shifted that for me. And this is an extraordinary space to be. So when I hear you say that, Brooke, I'm so proud of you because there's a point where we have to acknowledge that we go, actually, I'm worth this. I yeah. am worth this. I am enjoying this experience. And this is a joy to be part of because I'm like, excuse me, but fuck me, I'm sitting with all of you. This is extraordinary. <laughs> and I know you work, do you know what I mean? But I like, Same. okay, yeah, it's that. That's what this pleasure is, to get the opportunity to do this. Anjanou, this is not your uh, your first time in the in the Emmys race. Do you have thoughts on this, this whole process? Are, are you enjoying it? <laughs> 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 Uh, let me be transparent and say, um, first of all, Brooke, I applaud you as well for, you know, sticking up for yourself and, and saying, um, listen, you know, I need, I need you to, I need you to see me because I'm worth, I'm, I'm worth seeing. And I want to piggyback on this whole, the whole Golden Globes thing. It, it, here's the thing. There's so much work that's being done and I've been a part of projects and all of you on this panel have been a part of projects that never, that don't get the limelight mm -hmm. because they're not on Netflix or HBO and you know, all the big channels, they're on other, they're on other networks and the show and the work is just as good, mm -hmm. just as good, it's just as stellar, it's just as excellent. But because this is sort of like myopic view of what is valuable and what is important 
And that goes into this whole discussion that you, you know, sort of reached, you know, um, kind of open, of, you know, a few minutes ago about this idea of it's not necessarily diversity, but it's truth. It's what the world looks like. Right. It's what exactly. the world looks like. Representation. A exactly of, of what our tastes are and and how how varied they are and i have been a part of you know projects that got completely ignored and got ignored because of of the network it was on not because of, not because the work of my co-stars or the directing the writing or whatever wasn't good it was just we don't watch that network and that's not that's not right that's not right so, so, so we have to, so I, I, I am excited about um, opening those, opening those other doors and, you know, this sort of idea of being at the table, it's like, yo, let's get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's, let's get out of the house, you know, and I know women, the women on this panel know that specifically. And if you are, you know, uh, you know, if you're a queer writer, if you're a queer actor, you know, it's sort of like we're at this moment, this really exciting moment, I think, of where we can reinvent this whole thing, you know, all of this, we can start from zero. Um, no, no, none of the rules apply. Yeah. So, um, I'm excited. I, that excites me. Now the whole, like, am I excited about campaigning? Not so much, yeah. but, <laughs> but I see you're right. It's a part of the job. If you get, if you get awards, you get more money, you get more jobs and you can pay your rent. And it's exactly. just the reality. There's, there's a real, there's a real battle uh, going on. I think because Hollywood traditionally told society what, what was important to watch and what, who was important to watch. Yeah. And uh, it shifted back in about 1967, 68, that, that, that uh, Oscar campaign. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gone forward. So now we're at this, this critical point where folks are saying, no, we, we want to see the representation, not only behind the camera, in front of the camera, and on, on the, the Golden Globe uh, writer panels, you know, so it's the, the, the folks are saying we want we want more. We're not content with just um, you know the the lip service to it. And it'll be very interesting to see how the Golden Globe folks respond, and how no, not more importantly, how we as actors respond to the Golden Globes in terms of whether or not I've heard there's some of, of some movement afoot for people returning their Golden Globes, and yeah, you know maybe you give the power may, to. Yeah, maybe the actors may boycott the Golden Globe. You know, so mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see the power because we got the power. We have the power. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, so I kind of, you know, picking back, uh, piggybacking off of saying, uh, you know, that that this is these campaigns are part of the work. They can open up the doors to other roles. I'm curious what past roles of your own have actually opened up doors for you. Theater. Uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and that's why I've ended up being here because the first job straight out of that, um, thank you, Jared, was um, the um, doing. And then you go, all, all right, let's just keep open to the energy and the spirit, and let's keep working and seeing where it goes. So that and the undoing. Uh, I did a TV show called The Big C, and I played mm -hmm. schizophrenic. Uh, homeless by choice, brother of Laura Linney. And, yeah. and Laura Linney was a, an executive producer on that show and we've been classmates together at Juilliard and she campaigned for me. Like I had to go in and fight for it and jump through hoops, but it was supposed to be a much younger. For, and so that changed a lot for me. I started playing different kinds of parts and she was my underclassman at, at drama school. So the lesson is always be nice to the people who are. <laughs> Because one day they may be Laura Lynn and help. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I did a play called Fences a on Broadway. Oh. Changed my life. Black in the day, and that changed my life. <laughs> Everything shifted for me, and I, I've always been indebted to uh, Lloyd Richards, the director, uh, for championing me. I don't know why he did, but he did. Were you just out of drama school, Courtney, when you did that? I did it uh, when I was second year at drama school because the student because they did uh -huh. it at Yale and then 
it did at other liberations and went on to Broadway. And, and uh, um, so Lloyd stayed with me, um, allowed me to stay with the play, even though I was a student and he took got a lot of flack for that. So, you know, um, and then of course the, uh, um, the um, People versus OJ um, uh, changed uh, and Anthony Hemingway and Ryan Murphy um, sort of mm -hmm. changed my life there. So, you know, it's always somebody who's looking you know, down and saying mm, that person. So, yeah. Rucker Anjana? Well, I was going to say, you know, Silence of the Lambs. Um, mm -hmm. And now, yeah. right? But I was wondering if that, that was going to be the one. <laughs> but it's kind of odd because then I was the fat girl, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I had to gain 25 pounds and, you know, and so then it was like a whole thing of re. I just feel like I've been trying to reinvent. I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Keep doing it. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> Let me. Can I say this? Can I say this? You are whatever. You wait. We wake up in the morning. We don't know what the heck we're doing. But you are doing it well. That's what matters. Aww. Even Aww, if thank you. feelings of in invisibility or whatever, you are doing it well. So, oh, yeah. thanks, yeah. Lord. <laughs> um, so um, a, a role from I don't I don't know I have no idea I don't know I don't know what I did I I just I, I know the Clark sisters blew me away that's all I got to say the well, Clark sisters which you didn't get no love from the industry on but the Clark sisters was that was Emmy that was Emmy 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 all over it so well thank you I called you at two in the morning and told you that I appreciate that. Well, I'll say this, that I, I think, I don't know what particularly the, the roles were that lead me to be able to keep getting a paycheck, but um, <laughs> just to put it in, you know, real terms, but uh, I, I've had people like, like Courtney who, you know, saw something in me and championed me for the job that I have now. So I, I think what you said, John, about having people in your life that champion you and I think it's you know paying it forward you know because we don't know we don't know what we do that really affects someone you know and whoever in the world we just we don't have a sense of that and that being championed by other people for me is a huge recurring theme in my life so absolutely with the undoing i found out that nicole had been part of that we don't know we don't know her on tv but we do know her in theater let's bring her in. Everyone else is set, doing it in different ways and have this TV experience. But in terms of that part, I was so blown away to find that out because it wasn't obviously made present when I was there, but I found out post that she'd been part of that. Um, so that sense of, for me, absolutely. You look after those coming up below you, behind you, beside you, but absolutely give thanks to all those beside you and before you. I have mm -hmm. to do that every time. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you've been championed, when someone has taken a chance on you, you want to, you want to do the yeah. same for people for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I will say um, full disclosure in treatments, not on yet um, as of the recording of this. Uh, so, so audiences haven't seen it, but I know press and, and folks in the industry are starting to see it. So I don't know if you'll have an answer for this question, but certainly jump in uh, where you might hear um, because uh, you know, all these shows were on uh, during the pandemic. People were at home consuming TV like never before. Did that change uh, in any way your experience with with a show releasing, with audiences interacting and talking about the show, or you receiving messages from fans? Everything shifted. I mean, we, it used to be about going to the movies, and and then you had to wait for it to come to TV. Um, but now TV is king. Yeah. And I don't know when people will go back to the movies or how they'll go back then, what numbers though. It's gonna take a while. So everything shifted. Everything was was about what we're doing now, zooming and I mean it's it's we had to go with the way the world shifted and uh, and it's changed the business. Uh, you know, so streaming is you know, I, I'm mad when a, a movie won't come out. I'm where's James Bond? <laughs> but I want it in the cinema. Screaming. I want James Bond in the cinema. Where's James Bond, man? No, I'm like, no, what no. the no. Daniel, 
Come on, Danielle. Mm-hmm. It's for the cinema. That one's for I'm the cinema. Like tired of waiting. <laughs> soon, hopefully. Very soon. Very yeah. But when is in treatment out, out, John? We, sorry. Um, I think in treatment comes on um 23rd? Two oh, weeks. Okay. Yeah. Oh, also, good. Okay. I think um less about people's re- response, but I I think we're, as Courtney was saying, we're so blessed to be able to do what we do, but there's also been a lot of work during this time because there's been a demand for content, you know? Uh, so there's, there's, for those of us of a certain age, there were three networks when we were growing up and when we got out of drama school, there was only, The Equalizer was the only show being shot in New York City. And now there's like, you know, during this time, there's like 35 shows being shot here. So it's an amazing- and the equalizer is being shot again say, in New York City. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's amazing how much how much work has come out of a time when so many people are suffering. So again, how incredibly lucky we are to be. In and this- storytelling is needed, and that's what our luck is and our blessing is to be part of that. I really theater come back. So grateful. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and even John for in treatment, uh, I think is it just the first episode that's shot this this way uh, yeah, virtually. Well, that uh, Anthony Ramos, brilliant Anthony Ramos, is I think a patient that works with her virtually, that works with her on Zoom. That right. Works, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we've of course that's seen a COVID practical show. Have you guys seen that? I saw a thing in about in treatment that it was a COVID practical meaning that there were no moving parts. So it was very easy to do in a contained. Co- yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. if, if things like that can happen, please create the work. Lots of people who need it for sure. Um, you know, we're here of course talking about uh, all of your great work, but I have to know if any of you, or what is it your worst audition? Why are you going there, Jared? Why are you going there? <laughs> don't do that. Because don't there, it so sometimes well. just makes me feel better to know I'm not Jared, the only one who's bombed them. Why are you going there, bro? Why? <laughs> That's me. I'm going to jump in. I'm jumping in. Are you ready for this? Go for it. Mortifying. Ready. I sang a cappella to Liz Suedos. Oh. And it was, I'm not kidding you, the Eagles Desperado. Stop it. Stop it. And you got the job. Oh, no, I so did not oh. get that job. <laughs> oh. You said the worst audition. That's, it. yeah, that's, and something like that, it sounds like you remember it. Like it was, it, was it just a um, feel of like inadequacy? Do you not like singing? Oh, no, it was just looking at her face and she was like, mm. why are you wasting my time? You know, it's just, it was just stop horrible. It. Just, she said, yeah. she was saying, stop it. Just, just go, stop it. just go, just yeah. Go. <laughs> Leave me alone, um. torturing me. Um, Who else? I think, singing I, think I had a, I had a I had a singing audition audition in college, Pippin, and I worked, and I can't sing, and I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, and and, uh, it's the famous Pippin song, Be Free or something like that. Corner of the Sky, yeah. Yeah, what is it, what is it? Corner of the Sky. Baby, I love that song, but I couldn't sing it for nothing. (laughs) And it was embarrassing, but I went for it. I didn't care. I went for it. I know I was bad. I was, I was bad. I yeah. was bad. It was a music one. It was, uh, as a theatre one. It was for a production of Once on This Island a long time ago oh. in London, and I don't sing, and I, that just confirmed to me that I must not do that. Anyway, <laughs> this, I'm still, I still have issues with that feeling because it was a panel of seven people, and I had worked on the song I thought quite well with the help <laughs> of friends, but I remember going, I'm not really a singer. And they just go, Yeah, no, you can do it. I'm sure you can sing. I'm sure you can sing. Okay, well, I work on fever, Peggy Lee's fever. That's what I'm going to do. That's a nice, simple. Um, I get into the room. Oh, shit, there's loads of people here. It's not my comfort zone. And the piano player starts. And he starts. I'm <laughs> not coming in. And it just unraveled from there. But you know when you want to go, your, your, your soul is kind of ahead of you, slowly backing out the door. This is just horrific. And I... I, I the casting director didn't um, get in touch with me for another seven years. That's the truth. <laughs> Boy. Forget him. Forget him. Done. Gone. Over. Forget him. Mm-hmm. You've moved on. Um, I, I, um, the only person more terrifying than Liz Suedos to see <laughs> even Sontal. 
I auditioned. Oh my God. I sang. Who? Uh, who? Uh, Stephen Sondheim. You know that guy? Oh no, you are so terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> I saw you know, the, the one rule as an actress, you never apologize, you know, like you never say, oh, that stunk. Let me do that again. At the end of my thing, I said, I know that wasn't great, but if you give me this part, I promise I will, I will take less. You made it worse. You made it worse. <laughs> very nice, but I didn't get it. Oh. Oh. How can people sing? I don't I, I, <laughs> For musical performance corner of the sky yes yeah. wow. i um i my offering is not an audition the blessing of an audition is that nobody sees it but the people in the <laughs> room so i i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna contribute to this conversation by telling you of a performance i did <laughs> on a stage and and um the critic so in the in the in the play i was in a play and in the play, I turn into a statue. And the, the, the reviewer said, uh, I don't, <laughs> Anjanou Ellis was better as the statue. Oh, oh. no. No, 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 baby. Not Hermione. <laughs> Not Hermione in Winter's Tale, was it? Yes! Oh, baby oh. girl. Nailed oh, it. Baby girl. Oh, baby. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, painful, 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 painful. But I, you know, I've okay. moved on. Okay. Exactly, I was going to say we persevere, we move on, and yeah. and and here we are uh, celebrating all of this work. And that, by the way, that that is that's our time for today. I could uh, get into so many uh, small things with all of you about your performances here, but really, this has been a wonderful conversation, and I can't thank all of you enough for uh, joining us for it. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, and and uh, we will see you throughout the Emmy season right here on the Awardist. So thank you, Noma, John, Ingenue, Courtney, and Brooke for being here. Thank, thank you, everyone. Jared. I like that yellow blankie over there. That's very oh, nice. Oh, thank you blankie. so much. <laughs> Great ring. It's very comfortable. Yes, very nicely put. Such a privilege. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.